Hello everyone, this is my 7 round NFL mock draft for the Minnesota Vikings using PFF's simulator. Now one quick note before we begin, I noticed in the uh, analytics for my YouTube channel that people are only viewing about the first 2 minutes of my videos, so I'm changing it up. If you've watched one of my previous videos, this might be a little different, so I uh, hope you stick around. Okay, now, uh, talking about this draft, I'm going to talk about it in two different sections. The first half of the draft, the top 120 players, and then the second half are all the players selected after that. So with the Vikings this year, they had, a, they had an F ton of picks, and they had a lot of them in the top 120. They had a total of uh, five players selected. First player, 22 overall. I took Justin Jefferson, wide receiver, LSU University. Then at 25, I selected Jalen Johnson, cornerback, Utah University. 58, Noah Igbenogany, corner, Auburn University. And then 89, Devon Hamilton, uh, defensive tackle, Ohio State University. And then at 105, Matt Pert, tackle, UConn. Uh, overall, um, the Minnesota Vikings, they've been good for a number of years, but they haven't been able to quite get over the hump. Uh, now, though, compared to maybe two or three years ago, that roster is in decline. They've suffered some attrition, uh, especially, you know, Xavier Rhodes used to be fantastic, and he's no longer with the team. So they really need this draft. I think this is a key, vital, important draft for them to be able to replenish that roster and get back to where they were a couple of years ago and then maybe even make it to a Super Bowl. And I think this would be a great start. The first two selections, a wide receiver and cornerback, and well, the first three selections are two cornerbacks and a wide receiver. That would really help out a lot. The, the, the safeties and linebackers are really good coverage players for the Vikings, but their cornerbacks are, are sucky. They're just not very good at coverage anymore. And so they really need to upgrade that part of uh, their team. Uh, so Jalen Johnson, I think, would help. He's very uh, scheme-diverse. He can play in zone or man, I think. Igbenogany, he's not a fantastic scheme fit, honestly, because he's more of a, a man uh, cover corner. But I think maybe he could work in Mike Zimmer's uh, defensive scheme, maybe, uh, fit him in there. There wasn't another great option at 58, and I really wanted to address cornerback. There wasn't another uh, different a uh, player that would fit their scheme better at that selection, but I still wanted to address the secondary. So I felt like uh, even though the scheme fit isn't great, that Igbenogany can still be a, a plus player for them. A uh, wide receiver, of course, losing Stefan Diggs and really only having Adam Thielen anymore. Uh, they need multiple wide receivers and taking one at 22 Justin Jefferson he's a slot only guy so maybe it's not going to work out because I think Thielen goes in the slot a lot too but this guy has just been tremendously productive he's really fast and what I really really liked and stood out to me about him was the fact that he just catches everything like he's really good at picking up first downs with slant routes and just catching everything as opposed to someone like Brandon Ayuk that I noticed another wide receiver prospect in this draft that uh, Ayuk would would he had too many drops he, he's so but, but anyway um, so Justin Jefferson he's super productive uh, fast guy issue is that he's more of a only slot guy I don't think you really put him on the outside at all so moving on uh, Matt Pert and Devon Hamilton both of those positions uh, and players I think would upgrade the Vikings roster. Uh, defensive tackle has been uh, lacking for a number of years now, especially anyone with so sort of some pass rush prowess. Uh, Hamilton, I think, brings a little bit of that. He's not going to be amazing like Javon Kinlaw or maybe Jordan Elliott, but I didn't want to take uh, either of those two players at 22 or 25 because I felt like cornerback and wide receiver are much better value at those those places so by the time that we get to 89 no one of uh, Elliot or Kinlaw caliber is around anymore I think Hamilton is a nice uh, cons um, consideration or not uh, consolidation ah sorry anyway uh, he's a good player and I think uh, he could certainly help out the Vikings and then Pert he uh, 
he's a good pass protector. He looks a little funny when he's doing it, but he gets the job done and offensive line has always been kind of up and down for the Vikings. So adding another tackle prospect, I think, uh, is a nice way to go. Then uh, moving to the second half of the draft, all the players selected after 120, uh, the Vikings had a lot, a really big group of them. So let's just go over it quickly. John Hightower, wide receiver, Boise State. Darrell Williams, guard, Mississippi State. Uh, Josh Love, quarterback, San Jose State. Carter Coughlin, Edge University of Minnesota. Darnell Mooney, wide receiver, Tulane University. Ste Stephen Sullivan, tight end, LSU. And Derek T, I'm going to call him Big DT or the DT or something like that. He's, uh, he's more of an edge player, similar to Carter Coughlin coming from North Dakota State. Now, with this group of players, uh, I, I, why I'm talking about top 120 and players past that is because I view those two groups as different. In the top 120, I want to I want to select a, a player and add a position that I feel can come and start right away for my team. I don't want them to be blocked in any way. For instance, like last year when the Green Bay Packers selected Rashawn Gary, they had Preston Smith, they had Zadarius Smith, Smith, and then some other guys ahead of Gary on the depth chart as an outside linebacker. I never want to take a player in the top 100 that's blocked at, at, on their in their rookie year for a path to starting. I really don't like that. It, on rookie contracts in the NFL, you need to extract the most value you can from those players, and that means plugging them in and playing them from day one if they're any good at all. So... That's why in the top 120, I try to get players that um, are going to start or could start right away for the team. Mo mo uh, mostly, I mostly try and do that. Uh, with the with the last uh, rest of the draft, those players are more depth players and competition. Uh, the guard with Darrell Williams, I think that's good to just uh, try and solidify that offensive line. Josh Love, because... Uh, the jury's not really the jury's out on Kirk Cousins, but we know <laughs> actually kind of the opposite. We know what we're getting from him, but is that going to be good enough? Uh, maybe Josh Love comes in there. He I, he's a prospect that I love in this draft. I I take him all the time around the two hundreds because I think he's insane value there. Throws an amazing deep ball. Uh, I think he can back up Cousins, and then also because Cousins' contract is non-guaranteed now after this year, I believe, so they can start to maybe move on from him if this guy really shows well. And, and I like him a lot, but but he's super risky because from San Jose State, you just you just don't know a lot about him. Uh, Carter Coughlin and then Derek T. Those are both edge players uh, with. Um, Everson Griffin moving on. They need more edge guys. Uh, Stephen Sullivan is a tight end that gives him, uh, he's got good speed, but he wasn't used a ton at LSU and he wasn't targeted a bunch. So that's the risk with him. And uh, John Hightower, just another wide receiver. He's an outside guy. That's why I selected him because he, he doesn't play in the slot. You can put him on the outside. He's got good speed, fairly decent route running. The, the issue with him is his production was not super amazing. And then also, he, um, he just didn't get targeted a ton at Boise State, and that makes you wonder a little bit. So his yards per route run are not the, the best, I would say. So overall, I think this this draft, especially because we went wide receiver, corner, corner, really addresses a lot of the big needs that the Minnesota Vikings have. And it will uh, certainly, if the real draft is any anywhere near close to this, it doesn't have to be the same players, but at least if it's the similar positions addressed, would really help the Vikings out and they can get back to uh, winning the NFC North and then maybe even making a Super Bowl. Okay, uh, thank you very much for sticking around. If, if you're still here after about 10 minutes, I really uh, appreciate that. And um, in summary, uh, thank you and uh, good luck and have a nice day.